All right, people, I'm back making another little lesson video again about Clarence White. Um, doing a little experiment, different way of recording this. I'm plugging straight into my universal audio and using a amp sim. So we'll see how that works out. Um, okay, this video is about Nashville West. This uh, will focus on the live version from the birds Fillmore record, which I talked about in this other Clarence White video I did. Um, so the tuning for this is a little bit different. Uh, it's just dropping the high E string to a D, which puts the top four strings the same tuning as a banjo, D, G, B, D. Um, to do that, I'll also mention this cool little gadget I have. I have a Strat that floats pretty significantly and I put one of these uh, Tremolno deals in here. So you, you kind of screw these in and you can do alternate tunings and country bends and stuff. It works really well. Highly recommend. Um, the other thing with this tune is that it features a lot of behind the nut bends. So you can do those just normally. Um, I have my string tree down quite far to facilitate a lot of uh, break angle. So I actually just undo the string from the, the tree so that it, I have a lot more room to, uh, to do this behind the nut bend. You may or may not need to do that, but it's, it's an option. The main part of this tune, the melody, is just over a C chord. I'm sorry, a G chord to a C chord, so just one four. And I'll just start right away with, with looking at that main theme. So it combines... Um, Bunch of country techniques, hammer on, pull off, low register bends, um, and you can play some of it with chicken picking. To be honest, I'm not totally sure uh, to what extent he used his fingers uh, versus the pick in this, but um, there's a lot of flexibility here. So, the first phrase starts on a pull off, or I'm sorry, a hammer on up to the G. <laughs> And then um, a bend from the uh, note A here, up a whole step. So we have. And then we're going. So the D string and the B string. Um, you can do that with your fingers or with the pick. You're doing that while that bent note is still there. So you do it twice, and then you play that same bend and release it. So there I was playing that um, as a roll. You could also play it just with the pick. So again, kind of cool, you have some options. I probably, when I've played this live, um, I've probably switched back and forth between those different ways in the middle of the tune. So, got some flexibility there. Um, the second phrase starts off the same way and then we introduce that behind the nut bend, so. So the second phrase. So that's just uh, the bend and then the high string. And then we're going to hit the open string. And we're uh, bending that up a whole step here. Now, I'm using tens, not very heavy. Um, if you do use a heavy string, uh, you may have to get some different uh, types of callus depending on where you're playing it. Um, I use a couple fingers on it, and so it, it doesn't doesn't hurt me too bad. If it is, uh, if you do have the string tree there, it, it can it can be pretty tight feeling. But anyways, you deal with it. It's not not the end of the world. So whole phrase is like this. So you're hitting that B string after the bend. So that's the first half of the melody. 
Um, the second half begins the same, and um, then it goes to this cool uh, lick that alternates between the G string and uh, G an octave higher. So let me play the whole thing. So that part we go. And that just leads us right back into the main um, theme again. So what I'm doing there, it goes sliding up to that high octave G. And then you're just alternating between your f um, finger and the pick. And coming back down kind of anticipates the um, bend in that main theme. Uh, so that's it. That's all just over uh, G and the C chord. So let me play that whole part. So that's the main theme, and then the B part of the tune goes to C. So we're walking up uh, the scale, just all pick notes to the C. And then what happens is what I'm calling the buckaroo lick. Um, it's a lick that I talked about in the first video I, about Clarence White that I did. And he does it over a C chord. Um, an A chord and a D chord. Um, so let me just play that part. So that's the basic uh, phrase of it. If, if you want more explanation of that, go watch that other video. Um, you can do that in all sorts of different shapes like he does here. Uh, so after that, doing the buckaroo lick on C, it goes G to E minor. Which is a similar phrase to the high G uh, bit in the, in the main theme here. And then it goes back to the C. So basically, pretty similar lick. He does some variations on that live, but then he does the buckaroo lick over A, like this, and then on D. So there, um, basically we're looking at a D chord that's going up to a G chord. Now that, um, that uh, little voicing there is going to be hard to do in standard tuning. So there's a few really cool signature licks on this tune that involve that same uh, pull-off rhythm that are pretty hard to do in standard tuning to get the intervals as close in the right way. Um, you can approximate them, but it's some of what makes this tune really cool. And then... Um, it basically just repeats the same uh, main part of the theme, the beginning part, and then he sort of does a combination of soloing and referencing the melody on the back half of the tune. And I'm going to make another video that shows some of the licks he does there, because they're really cool, and um, a lot of them involve a B-bender, and they're interesting because, in my opinion, you can kind of tell that he's still figuring out the B bender and then factoring that in with this string that's tuned down to D. He plays some uh, some phrases which I suspect were mistakes, but that are very really, really cool. There's a flat nine situation going on there. Um, yeah, it's all good stuff. So I'm gonna play the whole 
um, I'm going to play the whole tune just so it makes sense in context. So here we go. idea um, and then from there it kind of like I said he, he starts soloing or however you want to view it it's not like he's just going off and playing random licks over the chords it's very referential to the melody um, the reason that I did this tune was I used to play in this kind of blues rock group in Denver and we would open each set with a guitar feature before we got the band leader up there and we would do a fiddle tune, and we did this one. And um, I think it's just a really cool example of a really short guitar showcase that um, isn't shreddy. It's really cool, and there's a lot of really great licks in there. And it definitely features the guitar a lot, but it's not, it's not like a look at me, look how fast I can play. Although Clarence could play very fast. Um, yeah, so... So check out this live recording. That's kind of where I'm taking stuff from. And uh, yeah, hopefully maybe a, maybe a band somewhere will uh, let you play this tune. It's really short, fun little uh, tune to let the singer have a break on. So that's it. Hope you found this useful. <laughs>